Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. We do have something rather special for you today. We're playing the prototype of the recently successfully kickstarted title, Chaos Reborn. You could, I suppose, call it a reboot of the 1985 ZX Spectrum title, Chaos the Battle of Wizards, if you like. I am joined today by the lead designer who perhaps you may know better as the brains behind Laser Squad and the original XCOM. His name is Julian Gollop. Welcome to the show. Hello, great to be here. And we do have a third player with us as well, just to make things interesting. And he is certainly a name I think you should know. He goes by the name of Ken Levine. Hello. Good morning. Or late afternoon for you in all you English types. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I managed to escape the uh, motherland a long time ago. I, Julian, uh, you're still over there, though. Uh, right? I'm actually in Bulgaria, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, there you go. None of us are actually in England <laughs> no, anymore. All you are Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just summoned a, a, a goblin, so I've just kicked off the game now. And it's over to you, Ken. And you can ponder your spells. And um, yeah, John, you can also look at your spells because you've got a little view spells button down the bottom right. Indeed. I should stress to those watching, by the way, this is very much a prototype. This is not how the final game will look. Although if you are interested in the concepts for that, then you can check out the Kickstarter page, which I will link in the description below this video. Now, if I recall correctly, I have a selection of somewhat randomly generated spells. Is that, that correct? That is correct. So for, the, for this prototype, you have a select, each of us has a selection of random spells. And each time you cast a spell, it is used up, so you have a limited arsenal. And Kenny has actually been very aggressive here. <laughs> he evidently is, yes. <laughs> aggressive with his dwarf, which is a bit unusual, to say the least. Hmm. All right. So I have a number of different spells here that I can use. Some of these have law and a number next to them. Some of them have chaos, which, if I recall correctly, will actually twist the alignment of the playing area. That's correct. If you cast uh, chaos spells, it pushes the balance towards chaos, making chaos spells easier to cast. And with law spells, they go towards law making law spells easier to cast. Oh, straight out with a gooey blob. <laughs> mm, gooey blob. So, yeah, Ken's dwarf... Not only was trapped by the blob, it was killed by the blob. Wow. My goodness me. Um, if I were you, Ken, I would run away. I'm actually going to do a... Yeah. Not I a can't strategic. really speak to my wisdom of why I did that with my wizard. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got overly excited for no reason and um, <laughs> exposed myself. To be fair, I can understand why people would want to be aggressive towards me. It happens a lot. <laughs> But actually, aggression in this game can be is is very risky, especially at the start of the game. Uh, you can mm, your wizard can die very exactly. Quickly. I mean, uh, you're very vulnerable at the start, and the the basic strategy at the start is to defend yourself or run away, or preferably both. So blob is spreading. This this is going to get very messy very quickly. I think Ken has elected to also <laughs> add gooey blob yes. to the mix. Battle of the blobs. Alright. Not so good for my goblin. He's safe for the moment. No. Evidently not. Hmm. What shall we go with here? Now, as you'll notice, there is a casting chance next to everything. These these can certainly fail. Now, what is the casting chance actually based upon? What will affect the chance of being able to bring something into being? The basic thing is that the more powerful the creature, the more difficult it is to summon. And you have a whole range going from dwarves, which are relatively easy, all the way to dragons, which are really difficult at 20%. Um, but of course, the casting chance can be manipulated two ways. One is by the balance of law and chaos. And the other is you can summon a creature as an illusion, which means you get 100% chance of casting it. But other wizards can disbelieve it. So everybody is going for dwarves here. Shall I go for a dwarf? The balance of the universe is not going in the direction that I want it to go in. Let's try and push it in that direction. That's chaos. I tried to summon a zombie there and it failed. So that's an example of a failed spell. Uh, let's Julian, can one, can one walk on these sort of white white mountain things here? Yeah, yeah you can climb up the mountain, the, you can climb up the, the elevated terrain from one level to the next, and that will give you a, a little height advantage, which is useful. But you can't go directly from the lowest level to the highest level. 
Now, Julian, I have to ask, you're reviving a game from 1985, which I, I cannot think of another Kickstarter that has attempted to dive back that far in time in order no. to do a <laughs> reboot or a reimagining. So I have to ask, what are the considerations that immediately spring to your mind when reviving a game that's that old and bringing it to a modern market? Well, my immediate consideration is what was what was really interesting and fun about that original game that I can that I can usefully update really for a, for a new audience. And you know, I went back to Chaos to play it last year, and it, and it was still just great fun. The core mechanics are great, and as you know, I'm a real fan of turn-based games. But the great thing about Chaos is that it it really is kind of a quick, accessible turn-based combat system that's really great in multiplayer. So obviously, internet online play was uh, you know one of the uh, you know the main features that I that I was going to go for with this with this particular reboot, and um, which is why we got this you know multiplayer public prototype now, just to to, to like prove this concept in a modern context. And um, I guess the the other thing was that I. I've had so many requests from people to, to remake this game that I, I figured there must be something about it that is still a little bit fresh and original compared to a lot of other things that are around uh, these days. So I'm going to go and take your dwarf. Nope, didn't do anything. Ken is going to go for the high ground, I can tell. I am going to just move my wizard and try and summon something else. Oh, let's go for a spider. I'm not doing very well in the casting at the moment, but I'm not in any danger. As the person who is, of course, behind things like Laser Squad and XCOM, it seems to me like you have a particular passion for screwing people over with dice rolls. Is that correct? <laughs> uh, well, you could argue that, yes. You could argue that. I mean, again, Chaos Reborn has this element of randomness which you can manipulate again by you know, with the illusion mechanic and, and you know the balance between law and chaos can be manipulated, and it's kind of uh, you have to judge things based on probabilities rather than certainties, and that makes it really interesting from you know making tactical decisions because your your plans might not necessarily work, and you know things can can change from one turn to the next, and it does make you think. We've seen something of a resurgence of games that really seem to love the notion of randomness lately, whether it be a big surge in CCGs or whether it be, a, I wouldn't even call it a revival of roguelikes, more of a, a spin-off of taking ideas, the randomness and the procedural generation and the perhaps inherent unfairness of the roguelike genre and then applying it to different genres such as platformers. Yeah. Uh, why do you think th that's so attractive to people at the moment? Well, I, I think it's attractive to people in the same way that it's always been attractive to me, that I, I really like underlying systems that generate uh, you know, unique experiences each time you play them. You know, and, and platform, I mean, like Spelunky, for example, which is uh, you know, a great platformer, but it, it's really made special by its, you know, the fact that you know, every time you start from the beginning, it's going to be, it's going to be different. The layout of the, you know, the caverns is going to be different, and it's, it's very cool. Um, and it also is is really great for small developers because you can leverage a lot of interesting gameplay and content without having to have an army of level designers and artists, you know, creating huge amounts of content that people are going to experience for you know like seconds as they pass through a level. So there's that advantage as well. But I mean, for me, it's all about you know games as 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 systems. It finally went down. <laughs> my my goblin was an illusion. I won't lament his loss too much. Typical. Okay. Let's see what we can bring out. You know, I do have more gooey blobs. But <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> just considering that might not be the best idea I've ever had. I think that'll trap you in your corner pretty badly. I, I think it might. The hope would be that it would kill all of you before it killed me, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, Let's try something else. Hmm. That's a bit dicey. We're going to try it anyway. Oh, I lost two spells. 
Six Alistair Manticore and a Vengeance, which is a magical attack. That was not very helpful, John, I must say. I rolled the dice on that one. It was only 44%. Yeah, I mean, wizards are, have quite a high magic resistance, so you were a little bit lucky there. Now I'm being trapped by the blob on that side. Zombies coming at me from that side. Uh, I've really got to do something here, which is... Let's try and see if I can summon this again. Great. Okay, got it. It's time. Giant spider. McKen's what do you envision as being the, the primary multiplayer mode of this? We're currently playing three-player, which is a fairly uncommon mode in most games for fairly obvious reasons. But is that how you would prefer people play it, or is 1v1 the way to go? I think with three or four players, it's kind of more fun, really. And the, the mode that I most like is actually the co-op mode, which is two versus two. Uh, and that is really interesting, because you have to try and coordinate with your teammate and um, which can result in some things going wrong as well, but it it is the most fun mode I've I've uh, implemented so far. So I think there's um, yeah, there's a lot of ways you can play it, and also we'll have uh, co-op versus AI modes as well, and we'll have special AI challenges. Oh, dear. Sorry about that, dude. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That elf is going to shoot me. He's got a ranged attack. I'm going to have to retreat. I've been, I've been caught in a pincer movement here. We're playing a, a lovely game of Hunt the Designer. <laughs> it's working fairly well. All right. Let's bring in something interesting. Like one of these. Elephant. That is very useful for you because your wizard can ride an elephant. And it gives him some level of protection. Because if you're if you're riding a mount, the, the mount has to be attacked and killed first before the wizard can even be harmed. Now, with my spider, what do I go for? I think the elf is the biggest threat to me, so I have to go over there and attack. The elf, he's, elf got three, he's got three guys breathing down your neck. <sighs> yeah, but they're slow. I mean, a zombie and a dwarf are the slowest creatures in the game. <laughs> All right. It'll take a while to get to me. I concur with Julian. He's an expert. He should go for you. <laughs> <laughs> Julian's had it out for me since the moment we started playing this with each other. Best yeah. Uh, because you've, you've beat me, that's why. In the first game and never again. <laughs> Let's see if I can summon a, a unicorn. you got to uh, guess, uh, John, which, which game I beat him in, the one that was recorded or the one that wasn't? Mm, let me think. <laughs> Not a particularly difficult choice there, no, is it? No, it's depressing. Yeah, it's always the way. I find a similar problem. Uh, I'll be playing along with the game, and I'll think, wow, that was an incredible round. I should have recorded that and done some form of commentary <laughs> over it. It's okay. I can definitely repeat that performance. Nope, <laughs> not a chance. Three in the morning, you're crying in your underwear. No luck. It's it, just, and it gets worse as well, because you psychologically just snowball, and it's absolutely horrible, and you'll never play that well again. Mm. My spider is stuck in a blob. What does that mean? Mm. Well, it means he can't do anything at all until he's. Uh, I can uh, I can attack the blob with another creature and try and free him, but I don't have one. And Ken's got his wizard on high ground over there. I think you're you're in a strong position there, Ken. And I am caught in a pincer. Ah, and it killed my spider. Nice. Very nice. All right. I am a little worried about the blobs. I'm going to be honest. This is <laughs> starting to get a little out of control. We may have made a horrible mistake. <laughs> you got enough. You got enough maneuver room up there. Actually, I think uh, your blob, Kane, is winning. It's more than, more than John's blob. Really? Yeah. You've got more of your blob. That's risky. <sighs> they both got magic swords now. Absolutely. Hmm. I'm gonna try and bring him around the back. Ah, I've gone into range of that archer now, haven't I? That's not too smart. Well, the elf cannot attack your zombie because your zombie is undead, 
And undead creatures uh-huh. in this game can only be attacked by other undead or magic spells. Now I am really, really stuck here. What do I do? Getting myself into a little bit of a trap, but okay. I'm going to try and do a magical attack on the zombie because I don't like the look of him. It's dealt with one problem. Oh dear. <laughs> this was a mistake. You know, I, I'm going to see Ken winning this. He's currently behind an impenetrable wall of goo. Yeah, he's he's in a good position. Depends what he can do with his elf, though. Okay. Hmm. Still out of range of my wizard, which is good. Regular old zoo going on here. <laughs> all right. Hmm. Well, you all can come and get me. That's the plan. If you had a magic bolt here, you could attack me directly, which would be really nasty. Well, even though I've got a magic shield, which does increase my defense. Significantly, I would still be vulnerable here. It's okay, I have a solution. More goo. <laughs> yeah, okay, now I'm truly blobbed. I shall back off on my magical elephant. Uh, that blob can kill me. Not a great chance of doing it, but it can. Mm, do I want to take this risk? It's too much blob, I don't like it. I'm going to back off. Okay, I've got to pull something out of the hat here. Let's try this one. Manticore. Ooh, that looks unpleasant. Yeah, he's, he's a mount. My wizard can ride him, if he wasn't stuck in blob, that is. <laughs> and he's got a, a ranged attack as well. It's not a very strong one, but, it, but it's useful. I'm just hoping... Uh, Ken's wizard, uh, Ken's elf, I should say, doesn't kill it <laughs> or kill me. <laughs> oh, let's see what his master plan is. He's safe on his little fortress of solitude in the southeast there. Does disbelief, you have his infinite copies of that, Julian? Yeah, disbelief is a permanent spell, and you are going to cast it on my <laughs> oh, magical. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know me too well, though, Ken, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. I do. Wizard. Uh, I can't reach him, but the goo is starting to subside, which is wonderful. Yeah, what I recommend, John, is that you head over with your elephant, because you're backed up with a sword, and just do a bit of hack and slash on Ken over there. He's a bit more defenseless than he actually he has got an elephant, but he's not riding it yet. You do not need to encourage me to do that. <laughs> All right. I should move on in this direction. Hmm. What can we summon? I think maybe. <sighs> Tried to take out the elephant. 73% chance. Not too bad, but. That's a good chance. That's a bit unlucky. How. Dice not my favorite. Can I disbelieve the elf or should I attack it? I just try. I'm going to just try disbelieving it to start with. No, it's real. Okay. That was a bad move on my part. Interesting amount of psychology goes into that, and particularly between friends, I would think. Oh, yes. Well, I, I did develop a bit of a reputation for casting illusionary dwarves at one point. And. Uh, I've kind of had to had to stop that a little bit. <laughs> that certainly has some very interesting implications for the potential competitive meta game once this thing comes out. Yeah, I mean, 
It does. I mean, we'll have a constructed mode in the meta game as well. Uh, it'll be still random modes, but in a constructed mode, you can configure your your spells before going into battle. It's a little bit like a CCG in the sense that you've got a deck mm -hmm. and you've got a hand of spells, um, and you can expand your spell library. You can add spells to it from multiplayer tournaments and from also the single player game, which is a huge part of the overall experience because we'll have this, this massive single player epic RPG system called the Realms of Chaos which are procedurally generated realms that you explore fighting enemy wizards uh, having encounters finding equipment and magical artifacts the dwarf is real dwarf is real. everything's far too real in this game maybe it's the elephants that are the illusions I just love the the light sense of paranoia that's being developed at this stage. <laughs> All right. Do I have anything worthwhile? Eh, perhaps. Uh, yeah. I'll bring out my own elf. There we go. I'm going to try a triple magical attack. Uh, I've got to select three targets, so I'm going to select the elf and the dwarf and the blob that's right next to me because I don't want it to spray. Oh, oh wow. Man. Three hits. Superb. That sucked. So, the problem with this game is actually that you're getting stuck behind your own blobs, both of you. Yes. <laughs> Oh no, it's clearing, it's clearing up a little bit. Oh no, it's not. It's spreading again. Yeah, I was hoping to try and get a, across the map, but as you said, it is now spreading again for some reason. So, Well, you can attack Ken's blobs, of course, but of course you, you run the risk of maybe getting trapped. I mean, your elf should kind of stay mm. at least one space away from uh, Ken's blob. Oh, I'm going to attack to get out. The blob's tied out under me, and that's good. My magic shield is just about saving me at the moment. Taking a few hits, but without big chances. Ah. Unfortunate. Yeah, I'm not sure this is the best plan. We'll give it a shot anyway. Well, I've got my own elf. He's going to try and try and cast it this time. Yeah. Thank goodness. Could be elf versus elf. Now, a lot of people get very curious when they see a Kickstarter, especially one that reaches its funding goal, but doesn't go absolutely insane like something like, say, Double Fine Adventure. And it's clear that you set the funding goal, you met the funding goal. Yeah. And then people start to get curious, well, is that enough? Because more often than not, we do see these Kickstarters that meet their funding goals, exceed them tremendously, and still end up overspending. So I guess the question would be, what does that amount of money pay for? Yeah, well, for me, I calculated the, the amount based on my, my team size. So there's going to be six of us working for a year on this game. And, okay, $180,000 might not sound a lot, but actually it does go quite a long way here in Bulgaria. Um, you know, if I was in the UK, we probably need nearly three times that amount just to, to fund mm. uh, you know salaries and so on. So... Um, I, I based the amount of money on our development costs, and I think that's you know that's the way you're supposed to do it, and that's the realistic way to do it. And I'm happy we managed to do it. We have some some things that we also want to add, like you know localization, um, but those were stretch goals. Those are things that we're going to need to find some extra funding for. I'm going to shoot your elf. That's the biggest threat to me at the moment. Ha! Ah. Oh, I managed to achieve something for a change. Well. <laughs> Um, shall I try some of this? No, actually, I'm not going to do anything for the moment. I'm safe for a turn, so I'm actually going to... I'm just going to end my turn here. Now, of course, we are all rapidly running out of spells and options at this point. Yes, and it will probably come down to a little wizard-on-wizard -wizard dueling, I suspect. Well, looks like that's going to be happening sooner rather than later. Yeah, and I am 
basically probably going to be on the losing end of this because I've got a bit of a disadvantage. I don't have the magic sword. Oh, I don't have my elf. <laughs> You know, I do not, let's see, one moment this, uh, I don't believe okay. in elephants. <laughs> and you were right. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, I've got one spell left. I could go and attack Ken. Uh, oh dear, but I don't stand a big chance of that either. Uh, let's just try this then. But is your elephant real, John? Let's try. I think your elephant might be real, but I'll just try disbelieving it in case. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was a real Monty Python moment. I just had a couple of coconut shells and I was banging them together. <laughs> okay, can finish me off. Nope. Try. Hmm. There's nothing more to disbelieve. No. Indeed not. So. Come on, join the battle. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. But first, I will fail to summon a green dragon. It was worth a shot. It's always worth a shot. It could have been the designer. All I can do here, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty much a spent force since you removed two of my spells earlier with a magical attack. Oh! No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, that is harsh. Sorry, Ken. Feel good. All right. Okay, John, just come and get me. Finish me off. Oh First. my goodness me! <laughs> that is. But is it real? The giant is an awesome creature. It's probably real, but I've got really no choice but to disbelieve at this point. And it is real. It is real. Can be crushed by a giant. It's a good way to go out. Oh, I'm just hanging back. Although in this head. case, that's not going to happen just yet. Well, my defense oh. is quite high, it's true, but I, I just don't have the means to attack back, so I think it's just a matter of time here. Mm. Unless I can hold out to the last turn. We're on 16 out of 20 at the moment, so it's been quite a long game. And if you don't kill me by turn 20, you'll end them in a draw. That would be a real XCOM situation of constantly missing those high percentage chance shots. Yep. I have to take the giant. I'm engaged. Well, thankfully, the giant cares not. Okay. 57%. That's not terrible. Let's give that a bash. Nope. Giant. Okay. 40%. <laughs> oh, nope. Know. Oh, man. This is where you attack me back and win, oh, isn't I it? I tried. <laughs> the only 20% chance. I think you, you still... Got the oh, right. You're done now. There You're we done go. Now. Well, done. well done. Finally, the dice go in my favor. Well, there we go. This is the prototype for Chaos Reborn. The Kickstarter, by the time this video is out, will most likely have ended, although you might want to double check. There might be a couple of hours left. We'll try and get this one out fairly early if you wish to get in on this. The prototype is, of course, available for everybody to play, although. Once we link this video, it might not be. It will be. be. I'm going to keep it going. Don't worry. The question is, will the server yes, keep it will. going? Yes, we'll it will see. Be. Oh, we'll excellent. Do. So, we'll test yeah, that please theory. Please come and play the game. It, it will be open to people to you know play and enjoy it for a little while longer, uh, even though the Kickstarter may be ended. So you know, come and enjoy. The last question, I suppose, would be, what would be your estimated release date on this, give or take? This uh, estimate is uh, a year from now, so it'll be May 2015. Fantastic. Well, Julian and Ken, thank you very much for taking the time out to get involved in this video. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaos Reborn is the prototype. You can go and check it out. The link is in the description below this video. The Kickstarter page I put in there as well. Even if the Kickstarter is over, you can at least read about the game. And no doubt we will be seeing more of this as we go through the year into 2015. My name has been Total Biscuit, joined by the lead designer for Chaos Reborn, Julian Gollop, and of course the mighty Ken Levine. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.